Hello. In this topic, we will discuss a very important how to choose an oxygen delivering device. Now, when a patient comes to us in hypoxemia, we have to give the patient oxygen and there are so many devices which are available. What these devices do? They administer and they also regulate the flow of oxygen. See, oxygen is a medication. It has to be prescribed properly. We don't want any wastage of oxygen and we want to administer as much oxygen required to that patient in hypoxemia to supplement oxygen. Now, how to choose the devices? Devices can be broadly classified very quickly in three types, low dependency, medium dependency and high dependency. If patient has spontaneous breathing and does not require any respiratory assistance, we keep them on low dependency device. That is your nasal cannula, face mask, NRM or HFNC. In this small video, I will discuss about these low dependency devices only. Now, if patient is spontaneously breathing but requires some respiratory assistance, then we go for medium dependency devices. And in medium dependency devices, you have CPAP, etc. available to us, BiPAP or CPAP. And if we want totally to control the ventilation of the patient or totally assist the ventilation of the patient, or if the patient is in apnea, then we have to put the patient on ventilator, that is the high dependency, IPPV ventilation, or even non uh, invasive ventilation. In this topic, I will discuss with you, in this video, I will discuss with you the low dependency devices. Now, low dependency devices are also divided into two types. Uh, that is variable flow or low flow or fixed flow or high flow devices. How do I choose the devices? It st strictly depends upon the ventilation pattern of the patient. What is the ventilation pattern? How the patient is breathing? What do I mean by low, the variable flow performance, low flow device? Variable performance, low flow device. Two important things. See, when we are breathing uh, stably, what do I mean by stable ventilation? When our respiratory rate is normal, then the inspiratory flow requirement is not very high. Hardly it is maximum 10 to 12 liters per minute. Your flow requirement, flow, what is the inspiratory flow? Inspiratory flow can be calculated by dividing the tidal volume by inspiratory time. So if I have a normal respiratory rate, the inspiratory time is adequate and we need a low flow to supplement that requirement. So a low flow devices would be adequate because the, uh, the flow requirement of the patient is less and these devices can supplement that flow requirement. Plus in these devices, FiO2 cannot be fixed by us. It can, it depends totally on the ventilation of the patient. So if patient has stable ventilation, stable breathing pattern, then only the required FiO2 will be delivered. Otherwise, lot of dilution by the room air will happen and the device will not deliver the required FiO2. So they are variable low flow device, right? Variable performance low flow device. So as I told, supplement inspiratory flow not more than 15 liters per minute and the oxygen concentration is not fixed. It depends upon the breathing pattern of the patient. Then in high flow devices, both these demerits are removed. A very high flow up to 60 liters can be delivered. If a patient is tachypneic, the inspiratory time is very less. And when the inspiratory time, the, ins the inspiratory time is very less, a very high flow is required by the patient. In a small inspiratory time, a high flow is required, right? Because as I told you, the inspiratory flow is equal to tidal volume divided by the inspiratory time. So less the inspiratory time, more the flow requirement. So when is the inspiratory time less? When the respiratory rate is very high. If the respiratory rate is very high, for every breath, the time would be less and for inspiration, even less time. But so these devices, when the patient has high flow requirement, the high flow devices would be useful. These devices can deliver, as I told you, flow up to 60 liter per minute. And they in them, the oxygen concentration is fixed. I can give fixed FiO2. This is the benefit. So how do I choose the device? Now I will discuss some case based scenario and I will tell you how to choose the devices and I will show you the devices as well. I told you, we choose the devices according to the requirement, that is how much is the hypoxemia in the patient and how much oxygen concentration we require. Then 
<coughs> the precision of the delivery. If I need a fixed FiO2, I will have to use the high flow fixed FiO2 delivering devices. Like in COPD patient, we need a fixed FiO2. So I would go for a fixed FiO2 delivery devices. Then of course, it depends upon the patient's comfort and cost of course. So let us discuss some case-based scenario. The first case, a 68-year-old male with history of cardiac disease was shifted to post-op room after a major surgery. His respiratory rate was 15 breath per minute, blood pressure 160 by 80 and heart rate 108 beats per minute, saturation 89%. So in this patient, I would go for a low variable, uh, let's say variable performance low flow device. Why? Because the respiratory rate is 15 breath per minute, patient has a stable breathing pattern and patient is just mildly hypoxemic. Breathing pattern is stable and mildly hypoxemic. So what I will choose? Either nasal cannula or a simple face mask. Both are very good devices for mild to moderate hypoxemia where a high flow requirement is not required. That is the patient's breathing pattern is stable. Now next case, <coughs> a 52 year old male shifted to emergency after RTA road traffic accident in shock. On examination, patient was conscious, blood pressure was 85 by 55, that is patient was in hypotension, heart rate was 115 breath per, uh, beats per minute, respiratory rate 25 breath per minute and saturation 92%. So patient was mildly tachypneic but there was no hypoxemia, saturation was adequate. But since the patient was in hypotension, when a patient is in shock or hypotension, we supplement and try to increase the oxygenation of the patient. So we just need a device which will little bit supplement the oxygenation. So I would definitely attach a nasal cannula in this patient. Why? Patient's breathing pattern is mildly tachypneic and patient is not hypoxemic. So a nasal cannula would supplement. Okay. So next case, <clears throat> a 49 year old male with history of fever from last five days presented to emergency with shortness of breath. On examination, the respiratory rate was 28 breath per minute, BP 180 by 90, heart rate 120 beats per minute and ABG showed PaO2 of 49 mm of Hg, PaCO2 of 29 mm of Hg and saturation 81%. Now this patient, the breathing pattern is less, is 28 uh, breath per minute. So I can say, it is, let's say, a kind of stable breathing pattern. If it is above 30 breath per minute, then only the, we call it bit unstable breathing pattern. Yeah, he is tachypneic, but a stable breathing pattern. But he requires, since he is mildly, he is tachypneic, he requires a little bit more of inspiratory flow than normal. That is, let's say, 15, 20 liter per minute. And he is severely hypoxemic. The saturation is 81%, PaO2 is 49 mm of Hg. So, this patient would require a device which would give a higher oxygen concentration. But this patient would not require to be supplemented in the inspiratory flow because inspiratory flow requirement is less. In, I mean, not very high in this patient. If I would not say less, not very high in this patient. So, low flow device can supplement, but device requires to give a higher FiO2. So, NRBM would be the choice, non-rebreathing mask. So, three scenario I discussed and I chose the different devices in this. So, very quickly, let us see about the devices. <coughs> Common low flow devices. Now, nasal cannula, prongs or we, or we have spectacles or nasal catheter. You can see this. I will show you, I will show you the nasal uh, cannula also, the image also. But before, let us so just see the devices. Then we have face mask. We have two type of mask with reservoir bag, partial rebreathing mask and non-rebreathing mask. Okay. So, these are the devices which comes under low flow device. First device, this is what is we call nasal catheter or nasal cannula. As you can see in the image also, there are two catheters in both the nostrils, a very small reservoir space and a tubing for the supply of oxygen. Now, this device, this is a very comfortable device, a low flow device, which is a very useful device for patient in mild to moderate hypoxemia. Now, how to use this device? How to use this device? To use this device, we have to keep the oxygen flow 1 to 6 liter per minute according to the requirement. 
every 1 liter of oxygen flow increases the oxygen concentration by 4% above the room air oxygen concentration. That is if I am giving 1 liter flow through this device, right? 1 into 4, that is 4% oxygen concentration above the room air oxygen concentration will increase. FiO2 will become 0.21, that is room air oxygen concentration FiO2 plus 0 0.04, that is 4% above it. So, 0.25 FiO2 will be delivered. If I keep it 6 liter per minute, then 0.21 FiO2, uh, that is the room air FiO2 plus 6 into right 4 percent that is 24 percent above the room air the oxygen concentration will increase that is 0.24. So, 0 0.21 plus 0.24 that is 0 0.45 FiO2 can be delivered. So, this nasal cannula we need to keep the flow rate between 1 to 6 liter. See if you will increase the flow rate above 6 liter it will not do any much benefit plus it will be highly uncomfortable for the patient. So, what is the FiO2 range which will be delivered by nasal cannula from 0.25 to 0.45, right? So, in mild to moderate hypoxemia, a comfortable device. Patient comfort is very good because oral cavity is free for talking, eating, etc. Now, after this, we have this is a simple face mask, okay? This is a simple face mask as you can see in my hand also, okay? Now, this face mask, it has a dead space. We call the space plastic enclosure, which is attached on the nose and the, let's say, uh, uh, oral cavity of the patient. This plastic enclosure, the dead space is 150 to 200 ml. Then it has the tubing for oxygen supply, which opens in the enclosure. And it has the expiratory, uh, let's say, pores for taking out the expiratory port for exhaling out the expiratory gases. Since patient exhale, in this plastic enclosure, we have to keep a certain fresh gas flow, oxygen flow to remove that exhaled gas from the mask, otherwise rebreathing will happen. So, in this device, the flow is not started with 1 liter per minute like in nasal cannula. We have to keep a minimum flow of 5 to 6 liter per minute to 10 liter per minute. We go up to 10 liter per minute. Going beyond that will not give us any benefit. And what is the FiO2 delivered? from 0.33 to 0.6. So, it will deliver a maximum FiO2 of 60 percent. Um, that is FiO2 of 0 0.6, that is 60 percent oxygen concentration it can deliver. Okay. So, from mild to moderate hypoxemia, again this is a very good device. But its demerit over nasal cannula is that since oral cavity and nasal cavity both are <coughs> covered, it is little uncomfortable for the patient. Nasal cannula is more comfortable. So, in mildly hypoxemic patient, we always start with nasal cannula, okay? So, if patient is in hypotension, shock or a patient, let's say malignant, um, patient having some malignancy or anemia requiring some oxygen concentration, we go for nasal cannula. If nasal cannula does not serve the purpose, then we go for face mask, okay? Now, <coughs> next device. Next device, as you can see in the image is a mask with a reservoir bag as you can see in my hand also mask with a reservoir bag and depending upon the valve between the mask and the reservoir bag it is divided into two types as you can see this this has a plastic enclosure expiratory port in the enclosure a reservoir bag attached to it and a valve between mask and reservoir bag but the oxygen opens in between the valve of the reservoir bag and the plastic enclosure. Okay? So, oxygen is opening in the mask itself. As I told you, it is of two types depending upon the valve. The red one is showing, the red arrow in the image is showing one way valve and the black arrows, pair of arrows is showing two way valve. So, if it is two way valve, it is partial rebreathing mask. That is oxygen is going, I mean not oxygen, the air is going from the reservoir bag into the mask and from the mask into the reservoir bag also. So, both way the air is moving. It is partial rebreathing. And in this, we have to keep the oxygen flow between 10 to 12 liter per minute and FiO2 between 0.6 to 0.8, it will be achieved by this. That is 60 to 80 percent. So, 80 percent oxygen concentration is being achieved by this rebreathing bag, right? Partial rebreathing mask. Now, even better than this is the other one that is non-rebreathing. 
non rebreathing in this the valve is one way valve it will only the allow the gas from the reservoir back to go into the mask so a very high fio2 will be delivered by this device we have to keep the flow rate between 10 to 15 liter per minute maximum we can go for 15 liter per minute beyond that no benefit and a fio2 0.7 to 0.9 imagine it can deliver 90% of oxygen so if my patient inspiratory flow requirement is not very high but the patient is severely hypoxemic pao2 is very less saturation is very less this is the device of choice this is the best device which we can use it will supplement the oxygen concentration in a very uh, let's say effective manner up till 90% of oxygen can be delivered by this so it is nrm that is non rebreathing mask or nrbm as it is popularly called okay so let's see the next question <clears throat> a 49 years old male critically ill brought to emergency in severe respiratory distress with respiratory rate 45 breath per minute saturation 80% now see two things his respiratory rate is 45 breath per minute so if i calculate the inspiratory flow it would come to be 60 to 80 liter per minute the requirement would be 60 to 80 liter per minute and till now the devices which we have studied the low flow devices they were giving a flow up supplementing the flow up till 15 liter and i am maximum 15 liter per minute so if i will attach that device and i am in this requirement of the patient is very high lot of dilution of room air will happen and patient let's say fio2 will also be not achieved plus it will not supplement the in the inspiratory flow so patient's breathing pattern will not become stable it will remain unstable and patient will wear off patient will get let's say very very tired of his breathing pattern and a negative downhill right so in this patient i have to supplement both i have to give fio2 also and i have to give inspiratory flow also a high inspiratory flow also so what device i would choose in this in unstable breathing pattern with hypoxemia i would go for hfnc the best device high flow nasal cannula hfnc this is a high flow fixed fio2 delivering device this is high flow fixed fio2 delivering device if you see this the maximum flow which we can achieve in this device is 60 liter per minute imagine till nrm was low flow devices maximum flow was 15 liter per minute in hfnc up to 60 liter per minute right and this is based on actually oxygen air blending system it has a blender it has a humidifier it has a high flow inspiratory limb and it has a good nasal cannula which goes in both the nostrils so it is giving us the benefit of nasal being a nasal cannula and it is giving us the benefit of delivering a high flow in a heated and humidified way so if i show you the parts of hfnc you can see that there is a air oxygen blender i fix the total flow maximum 60 liter per minute we can fix we start oxygen and the rest of the flow it will entrain the room air it will mix air and oxygen which will be heated and humidified by the active humidifier then through a high flow inspiratory limb it will be delivered through the nasal cannula to the patient this is hfnc so what is the benefit first benefit already told that up to 60 liter per minute it can give the flow so it can achieve a very high flow then this high flow which it is achieving it can wash out the carbon dioxide of the dead space so little bit it will it will uh, let's say help in ventilation plus this high flow is creating a positive pressure in the airway so little bit it is supplementing in the peep also positive and expiratory pressure so it will also improve the oxygenation of the patient well how much peep it will deliver it depends upon what flow we have kept maximum i told you 60 liter per minute but we can start with 20 liter per minute we can go for 30 liter per minute 40 liter per minute so depending upon how much inspiratory flow we have kept that much uh, peep positive airway pressure will be generated so the range is from 2 to 4 cm of water of positive airway pressure it can generate at 60 m liter per minute a 4 mm a 4 cm of water of positive airway pressure it can generate then fio2 is fixed depending upon how much oxygen i have started 
FiO2 is fixed. I can deliver from 21% to 100% of oxygen from this device. And the best benefit, it gives these, this high flow in a heated and humidified manner. So acceptability of the patient is very good. So any patient with an unstable breathing pattern and hypoxemia, this is the device of choice. Well, if I say ventilator is a newborn baby, then this is embryo of the ventilator. It is little bit helping in ventilation and oxygenation without being a ventilator. So it's an embryo of ventilator. Got it? Okay, so this is HFNC. One more very important device I want to discuss with a question scenario. A 58-year-old male with a history of COPD brought to emergency on examination, his respiratory rate was 25 to 30 breath per minute, blood pressure 160 to 9, uh, by 90 mm of Hg, heart rate 112 beats per minute. And ABG showed the picture of PaO2 51 mm of Hg, PaCO2 58 mm of Hg and saturation 72%. So patient is in hypoxemia, patient is COPD patient, requires a supplemental oxygen, but we don't want to take away the oxygen drive of the patient also. So we want to, we don't want to give, increase the PaO2 beyond certain limit. So we have to precisely control the FiO2 to deliver a required amount of oxygen concentration to this patient, not to take away the respiratory drive, which depends upon the, the PaO2 and PCO2 of this patient. So in this patient, the best device which I would attach would be our Venturi mask or Venti mask, we call it. So Venturi mask is a beautiful device. It's also a high flow device because Venturi, in Venturi mask also up to 60 liter per minute of, ox, of flow can be achieved. How? What is this Venturi mask? Till now, all the masks which we saw, they were the part of low flow devices. And in them, the oxygen was opening in the enclosure that is the mask itself. But in Venturi mask, the oxygen is opening in this Venturi barrel. As you can see, this is something called Venturi barrel and it is color coded. See, this is a Venturi mask. I'll show you. This is a Venturi mask. And in this mask, we attach a Venturi barrel. This is a Venturi barrel. We attach like this. And oxygen tubing is attached into this Venturi barrel. So it passes through this Venturi barrel and based on Venturi effect, which is based on Bernoulli's principle, depending upon how much flow and which Venturi barrel I have used, room and rear entrainment will happen and a flow of very high flow can be achieved by the patient. See, there it is color coded and on every barrel it is written how much inspiratory flow we have to keep, the oxygen flow we have to keep and what FiO2 it will be delivered and we have to precisely follow it. Like this is the green one. In the green one, we have to give 15 liter per minute of, of the oxygen flow and it will achieve a FiO2 0.6. Now this is the red one. In this it is written, we have to give 10 liter per minute of oxygen flow and if it will achieve a FiO2 of 0.4, right? So similarly, this is the yellow one, 8 liter per minute and 0.3 uh, FiO2, 0.35 FiO2 will be achieved by this. Now, this is with different color coding of Venturi barrel. We have a single Venturi mask also. In this, we can rotate and we can control what FiO2 and flow we have to keep in this. So, in a single mask, this all color coding is the flow and FiO2 is achieved. Instead of having different Venturi barrel, a single mask Venturi mask is also available, which is regulated by keeping a fixed flow and delivering a fixed FiO2 depending upon the markings on this device. Okay, so we have both available. Now, what is this Venturi mask? As I told you, it is based on Venturi principle. What is this Venturi principle? See, this is the Venturi effect that when we give a high flow through a narrow tubing and then it passes through a, to a wide tubing, what happens? that since the volume increases, the pressure decreases. And if an opening is created in that wide tubing, because of decrease in the pressure, entrainment of the room air will happen. So this is the narrow tubing through which a high flow oxygen is given. And when it passes through a wide tubing, the 
there are let's say the uh, pressure decreases and there are opening in this tubing room air will be entrained so in this green one if i am giving 15 liter of oxygen 45 liter of room air will be entrained 60 liter of of the gas inspiratory flow will be achieved by this mask the patient will get 60 liter of flow at an fio2 of 0.6 so precisely the flow and fio2 is fixed so it is also high flow device up to 60 liter can be achieved and a fixed fio2 is being delivered so whenever we need to deliver a fixed fio2 this is a very good device plus it can also achieve a high flow the only demerit of venturi mask is that it cannot give fio2 more than 0.6 other high flow devices other high flow fixed fio2 devices can give up till 100 up to 100 percent of oxygen because they are most of them are based on blending principle that is oxygen air blending this is based on venturi principle different from other high flow devices it cannot give more than 0.6 fio2 okay so this is our venturi mask and these are the devices which i wanted to discuss the low dependency devices so depending upon your patient respiratory pattern and the requirement of the oxygen concentration you should choose your device and you should prevent any wastage of oxygen by precisely giving the oxygen required by that patient i hope this will be helpful in choosing the device thank you